Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now this is my fourth video this week where I've been covering the major announcements from ARM. At the beginning of the week, we looked at Dynamic, the way of putting heterogeneous cores into a single cluster. We looked at the new Cortex-A75, then we looked at the Cortex-A55, and now finally we've come to the new GPU, the Mali G72. So the question before us today is what's new in the GPU and when will we see it in a smartphone? Well, let me explain. So ARM's Mali GPU is the most popular mobile GPU in the world. You'll find it in about 50% of uh, all smartphones and also it's in other industries. Anything that needs a display, which can display complicated graphics, you will also find Mali GPUs in there. In fact, ARM's partners shipped over a billion Mali GPUs in 2016, so that's an amazing number. And now ARM have announced the G72. So as a bit of a recap, uh, last year ARM announced the new architecture, the Bifrost architecture for its next few years worth of GPUs. Uh, and we had the G71, which was announced. And the G71 is what you find in the Galaxy S8. You also find it in the any phone that's powered by the Kirin 960. Uh, and then we also had the G51, which was a, uh, an area efficiency GPU. So that's really aimed at the mid and low end for where kind of silicon is at a premium cost. And now this year we've got the G72. Now the G72 is a refinement and an improvement of the G71 and gives us greater performance, but also it has been optimized for some special use cases, which we'll talk about in a moment. So starting with the performance, now there are two numbers here that I want to give you. One is 40% increase in performance, which is an amazing number if you think about it. 40% better uh, performance in phones that we're gonna see in 2018 compared to phones that we had in 2017. And that's because of improvements in the Mali GPU itself, but also there are other improvements which will be things like uh, the ISO node, the manufacturing node that's used to put it into silicon, and maybe the number of shader cores that have been added in and so on. So basically in 2018, we can expect to see phones that are 40% better GPUs than 2017. If you look at just the GPU itself, if you took today's G72 and you compared it, uh, compared it against the G71 in exactly the same kind of chip and exactly the same setup built in exactly the same factory, the G72 is 25% faster than the G71. Now, as well as raw performance numbers, ARM have also been working to make sure the G72 is fully optimized for high fidelity games. And what we mean by high fidelity games is not your kind of your, your crossy road games where it's just kind of simple 3D graphics, but games that are bringing that kind of console level and PC level graphics to a smartphone. The example that ARM have given is the After Pulse game. And the developers of After Pulse worked closely with ARM to make sure that the uh, game could bring out the best graphics on a mobile device. Now the G72 has taken that even a step further and they've concentrated on optimizing the internals of the GPU so that it gets the best performance for these high fidelity games. Now in technical speak, high fidelity games means games that have a high number of vertexes, games that have complicated shaders, so the programs that run inside of those programmable shaders are complicated code, and ones that apply special effects to the actual graphics that we see. Now that's more than what you get in a sort of a standard game. These are games that really are pushing the envelope for mobile uh, gaming. And basically ARM have made sure that these high vertex counts, these high, complicated shader programs can run mega efficiently on the G72. In fact, ARM are saying that in the internals, the bandwidth, that's the data that's flowing back and forth, the amount of data flowing back and forth inside the, the processor can be reduced by up to 40% uh, on these high fidelity games using the G72 compared to the G71. Now, another area where we are seeing uh, the envelope being pushed for mobile GPUs, of course, is with virtual reality. And just recently we had Google I.O. And at Google I.O. there was lots of announcements around uh, VR, mobile VR. There are announcements around headsets that just have everything built into them. Of course, we're expecting to see Mali GPUs in those kind of VR setups. Daydream support for devices like the, uh, the Galaxy S8. And basically the Mali G72 has again been focused on optimizing for the use case of VR to make sure that all of those extra techniques that we need to apply for VR can be done efficiently in the G72. 
Now, Robert Triggs has written an excellent article over at androidauthority.com that looks at the challenges faced by mobile VR today. And I highly recommend that you go and read that article to understand what needs to happen for the future for mobile VR to continue its seller growth. And of course, the other big area where we are seeing great strides, of course, is machine learning and AI. Again, Google I.O., we go back there and we see that Google made lots of significant announcements, again, about uh, machine learning at Google I.O. We've got things like TensorFlow Lite. There are other things coming down the pipeline. And of course, Arm recently released their uh, computing library, which allows uh, the CPU and the GPU to work together to solve machine learning problems. Of course, that's a Cortex CPU together with a Mali GPU, and the SDK decides where to give the uh, jobs to which part of the, the SOC to get the best result. Now, the Mali G72 has again put in several optimizations to make sure that machine learning can run the most efficiently on that platform. One other optimization worth mentioning is the fact that the Bifrost architecture supports up to 32 shader cores. Now, we haven't seen a 32 shader core GPU actually out in the marketplace yet. However, the Samsung S8 is kind of pushing that boundary up towards that end. And so for the G72, uh, ARM have made sure that the 32 shader core version is actually fully optimized. So maybe, I don't think maybe in 2018, but maybe in 2019, we're gonna see some very high shader core counts in uh, G72 uh, GPUs. But for the moment, that is available now to their partners, knowing that it's fully optimized for that full set of 32 shader cores. So to recap, what we basically got is a 25% increase in general performance of the G72 compared to the G71. And that can go up to maybe 40% when you consider new configurations that are available and different manufacturing processes that will be available during 2018. We've also got the optimization for the 32 shader cores. And actually the G72 is less dense, 20% less dense than the uh, G71, which means you get more GPU in less of an area. Now, one of the amazing things we saw with the G71 was how quickly it made its way into a handset. Now, basically, uh, ARM create these GPU designs and they give it to their partners. So that would include people like Samsung and people like Huawei. Now, Huawei actually, from the moment they receive the designs for the GPU from uh, ARM, they actually managed to get it into a product, which is the Mate 8, in just eight months. From the moment they get the design, you've got to have it in a product, it's got to be manufactured, shipped and out into the marketplace in just eight months. That was the, the Huawei Mate 8 with the G71 in it. Now, I, we expect this rapid uh, uh, deployment of the technology to continue. So in 2018, we're definitely going to see phones with the Mali G72 inside of it. And we may see them sooner than we uh, than we previously thought because this, this speed of development is continuing. So watch out the beginning part of uh, next year, maybe even the end part of this year to see announcements for uh, SOCs with the G72 in it. I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like the video and you've liked the other videos I've made in this series, do subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so that you always get announcements of when we release a new video. And last but not least, do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.